Welcome to online worship at St. John's Cathedral in Jacksonville, Florida. My name is Kate Moorhead Carroll. I'm the Dean here at the Cathedral, the head pastor. I'm Mark Anderson, the sub-dean of the Cathedral. I'm so glad that you've joined us for worship today, but I invite you as we go through worship to think of yourselves as not just watching worship, but to truly participate in it. In our ancient tradition, we use the word celebrate when it comes to worship, we're celebrating, we're participating, we're entering into a relationship with God. So I wanna suggest four ways that you can actively participate and be a part of our community as we go through worship. First of all, I invite you to get a candle. You can light this candle. You'll notice that our acolytes light candles as they prepare for worship and I invite you to do the same at your home. There's also a moment at the climax of the service where you'll see the storyteller, the celebrant we call them, breaking bread, breaking a big wafer. I encourage you to get some bread, get it out of your refrigerator or wherever you keep your bread, your pantry. Break it and eat it with us and take it in that you are participating with us in our worship. Third, I invite you to sing with us as we go through the service. All of our hymns will have the text for them listed below as we're singing. The idea of people singing these hymns around the city and the state and the world is so beautiful as we worship God together. And finally, I encourage you to give generously from your financial resources. As the plates are passed here in person, there will be a link on your screen that you can click in order to give through our website. Your generosity means a lot to us and we are accomplishing so much ministering here in the heart of the city. If at any point you are in Jacksonville or you're able to join us in person, I certainly invite you to be with us in the heart, in the core of the city, to see this beautiful space, to worship alongside people who may be different from you, who may come from different walks of life. We are truly inclusive and we hope that you will feel that this is a home away from home for you. The Holy Spirit is mysteriously present with us when we worship God, whether it's in person or online. Open your heart and mind to the presence of God in this service. Hi, I'm Tim Keller, Cantor from East St. John's Cathedral. We're going to say just a couple words about the music for this Sunday, April 14th. Prelude this Sunday is entitled Benedictus by English composer Alec Rowley. He lived from 1892 to 1958, so he was active in the or first half of the 20th century primarily. And um, he was an organist, a pianist, composer, pedagogue, and he uh, worked, he had um, organist posts at several important churches in England. He, um, he also was one of the founders of Trinity College of Music in London. He actually wrote a great deal of piano music. Um, however, his organ and choral music is probably best remembered today. This um, Benedictus actually takes as its inspiration a couplet from a poem by the 19th century English poet Christina Rossetti. And it's a simple two lines that, that say, I bring, I bring peace and calm. I bring ease, I bring peace and calm. And this is from a, a poem of hers that is entitled, All Thy Works Praise Thee, O Lord. She um, had written quite a, bit of, um, quite a bit of poetry, mainly for children, but much of it re religious in nature as well. This um, organ piece you'll hear starts out very, very quietly, and it gradually builds and builds and builds to a huge central climax with full organ, and then it backs off again. It's not a long work, it's only about five minutes, but it actually is representative of a style of organ writing that was very common around this time. You'll find a lot of 
English organ pieces from the early to mid 20th century that follow the same pattern. They start out very quietly, and they build up to a huge central section, and then they back off again. So this is a type of piece like that. Our offertory anthem this Sunday is Why Seek Ye the Living by Charles Villiers Stanford. Stanford is one of the most common names you'll see on musical programs here at St. John's. He was Irish by birth, but worked most of his life in England. And he was one of the very most important English composers of the early 20th century, late 19th century. He um, is primarily remembered for his choral music. Why Seek Ye the Living comes from around 1890. That's the year it was published. And it references the women coming to visit the tomb of Jesus on Easter morning and finding an angel there telling them, why are you, or asking them, why are you coming to seek the living among the dead? And it opens up very descriptively. You'll hear the organ kind of creeping around on little chromatic scales. You can, it's almost like people are kind of creeping towards the tomb of Jesus. And then when the angel announces, why seek ye the living among the dead, he is not here, but risen the organ. The music changes entirely. It goes into a blazing D major fanfare, which concludes the piece. Our postlude is entitled Gloria by Marcel Dupre. And this piece is actually the very last of a series of improvised, improvised pieces that Dupre had done for a Vesper service in 1919. And like so much of Dupre's music, it, um, it started out as an improvisation, which later was put into compositional form. And it's a, basically a, it's a typical French toccata, organ toccata, which means you'll hear thundering organ pedals against rapid manual figurations. It was something that many of the French composers did a great deal. And this makes, it's a very short piece, but it really packs a punch and it makes for a great Easter season postlude. I hope you enjoy the music this Sunday.
Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Reading with me. Almighty God, 
To you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify for your name, name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, whose blessed Son made himself known to his disciples in the breaking of bread, open the eyes of our faith, that we may behold him in all his redeeming work, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. A reading from the book of Acts. Peter addressed the people. You Israelites, why do you wonder at this? Or why do you stare at us as though by our own power or piety, we had made him walk? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our ancestors has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate though he had decided to release him. But you rejected the Holy and Righteous One and asked to have a murderer given to you, and you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses, and by faith in his name itself has made this man strong, whom you see now and know. And the faith that is through Jesus has given him this perfect health in the presence of all of you. And now, friends, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers. In this way, God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets, that his Messiah would suffer. Repent, therefore, and turn to God, so that your sins may be wiped out. The word of the Lord. God. Let us read Psalm 4 together. Answer me when I call, O God, defender of my cause. You set me free when I am hard pressed. Have mercy on me and hear my prayer. You mortals, how long will you dishonor my glory? How long will you worship dumb idols and run after false gods? Know that the Lord does wonders for the faithful. When I call upon the Lord, he will hear me. Tremble then and do not sin. Speak to your heart in silence upon your bed. Offer the appointed sacrifices and put your trust in the Lord. Many are saying, Oh, that we might see better times. Lift up the light of your countenance upon us, O Lord. You have put gladness in my heart, more than when grain and wild and oil. I lie down in peace. At once I fall asleep. For only you, Lord, make me dwell in safety.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Christ. Jesus stood among the disciples and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see. For a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words, and I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written, that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. A few years ago, when I was living in Texas, my doorbell rang on a Saturday morning. It was a Saturday, so I was just dressed in a t-shirt, not in my clergy collar. I ran down to the door and I opened it and there were two men standing there. Each one was holding a Bible. The first man said to me, we've just launched a new church in your neighborhood. So we're going around to get to know our neighbors and find out about your faith and find out if you have a church home. The second person jumped in and said, so do you have a church home? I said, I go to a church almost every Sunday, and as a matter of fact, I'm there almost every day of the week. <laughs> the first man jumped back in and he said, one of the challenges with so many churches today is they don't really preach the Word of God. He said, does your pastor really preach the Word of God? <laughs> I thought about that one for a minute. And then I said, I hope so. <laughs> so I've got a question for you. Is that what it means to be a witness for Christ? Going from door to door and asking people if they have a relationship with Jesus or asking people if they have a church home? Is that what it means to be a witness? The gospel reading that we heard today from Luke's Gospel records the final events in the ministry of Jesus before he ascends into heaven. And the Gospel says that Jesus opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And then he said to his disciples, you are 
witnesses. You are witnesses. In this final chapter before the ascension, Jesus starts from the beginning. He opened their minds to understand the scriptures. He told them the story of their faith again, proclaiming the story of God's salvation and God's love. The great Anglican theologian N.T. Wright wrote a book a few years ago about why we need to know the story of our faith and then what we're called to do with this story. N.T. Wright in this book used an analogy of a Shakespearean scholar who discovered the first four acts of a previously unpublished five-act play by Shakespeare. It would be easy, N.T. Wright said, for this scholar to figure out how to stage the first four acts, but the challenge is what would he do when he arrived at the end of the fourth act? It would be odd to drop the curtain in the middle of the play. It would also be very odd to just perform one of the first four acts as though it was the final act. Instead, in N.T. Wright's analogy, this scholar hired play uh, who hired actors who had a deep understanding of Shakespeare and who knew their own lines so well and so deeply that when it came time for the fifth act they could simply improvise the solution. They knew Shakespeare so well that they knew how to conclude the play. And frankly N.T. Wright points out this is what Jesus calls us to do. We are called to so deeply know what Jesus has done and what he taught and how he lived that we can figure out in this modern world what it means to live into the fifth act of this play. This is precisely why before Jesus ascends into heaven, he sat down with his disciples and told them the story one more time. And then he said, you are witnesses. In other words, go and not only share, but also show in your life the good news that I've taught you. And this is what the church has done for, for about 2,000 years. The church has reflected on, for example, the fact that when Jesus walked among us, he cared for the sick. And in response, the church built many of the first hospitals around the globe, especially hospitals dedicating to serve those who were impoverished. This action is what it means to be a witness. And the church also saw that Jesus was a teacher, so the church decided to continue this work, and the church founded schools around the globe. And the church saw that Jesus loved the little children and had great compassion for orphans, so the church continued this work, founding orphanages all around this country and across the world. The church, for about 2,000 years, has discerned its calling by looking to the example and the actions of Jesus. And this is what it means for us to be witnesses. We're called to continue the work of Jesus. We're called to live in a way that when people see our actions, they will witness a reflection or even a continuation of the work of Jesus. St. Teresa of Avila so acutely, so precisely made this point when she said, Christ has no body in the world but yours. No hands, no feet on earth but yours. Your feet are the feet with which he walks to do good. Yours are the hands by which he blesses the world. Peter is one of my favorite disciples, and this is probably in part because he's always eager to faithfully follow Christ, but he fumbles the ball pretty regularly. I can relate to that in my own life. Peter had been set to inherit this family business. He had a good life. He was on the fast track. And then he met Jesus and everything changed. He left his whole life behind and he spent three years 
following Jesus around and listening to what Jesus taught and seeing what Jesus did. You could even say that he spent these three years really learning the first four acts of the play. Peter was there when Jesus said, you are witnesses of these things. Now at that point in his life, Peter could have gone back to the family business and gotten back to his life. He could have said, yes, I'm a witness, all done. But he understood that being a witness didn't simply mean observing what happened. Being a witness meant, and for us means, showing who Christ is through your actions. So Peter did exactly that. Beginning in the city of Jerusalem, he began telling others about Jesus and showing others what Jesus was like. Since Jesus had cured those who were unable to walk and told them to rise, Peter did the same. In the passage that immediately precedes the reading from Acts today, we're told that one day Peter and John were in the temple a lame man was carried in so he could beg for alms. Peter looked at this man and he said, I have no silver or gold, but what I have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, stand up and walk. And he took this man by the right hand and he raised him up. And then in the passage we heard a few moments ago, we hear that Peter addressed the people and said, You Israelites, why do you wonder at this, as though by our own power or piety we had made him walk? Peter was saying, in other words, that it was not through their power that they made this man walk. They were simply continuing the work, continuing the ministry of Jesus. And then in our reading from Acts today, Peter says, we are witnesses. We are witnesses. It was not just the words. It was also the actions of Peter that gave a glimpse into God's power and his mission of love and justice. Being a witness is not simply about seeing what Christ has done and then telling others about it. Being a witness is allowing others to see in you what you first saw in Christ. Being a witness means showing through your actions God's love to the world. In the original language of the New Testament, in the Koine Greek, the word for witness is martus. As you may recognize, this is the root of the word martyr, someone who is willing to give up their life to demonstrate that something is true. Being a witness, being a martus, means having the willingness to give up your time or give up your resources or even give up your life. Being a witness requires us to first know Christ and then to take action. Just as Jesus saw those who were unable to walk, those who needed others to help carry them, Jesus helped them rise. And Peter followed Jesus' example and continued this ministry. Even today, there are 80 million people around the world who are unable to walk and who can't afford wheelchairs. Don Schoendorfer, who joined us for our, our adult formation this morning, is continuing this work of Jesus today. He founded an organization called Free Wheelchair Mission, which is giving away wheelchairs to those who are in need and helping overcome biases in communities that look down on those who need wheelchairs. Peter took the hand of a man who was unable to walk, and we read that he raised him up. Free Wheelchair Mission has given away 1.4 million wheelchairs 
helping to raise people up off the ground, just as Jesus gave people the gift of mobility, and just as Peter continued this work, so is free wheelchair mission continuing this work today. Now, I'm not saying that this is the exact way that you are being called to be a witness to Jesus. You may be called in some other way. You may be called to help provide meals for someone at St. Mary's. You may be called to volunteer at a hospital or to get involved with big brothers, big sisters. But each of us is called to do something to be a witness so that our actions will help others glimpse who Jesus was and who Christ is today. This is what it means to live in the fifth act of this play. You are called to read the Bible, not just to know about Jesus, but so that you will become like Jesus and so that others will see Jesus reflected in your life. Remember the words of Jesus who said, you are witnesses. Amen. Turning to page four, let us stand and affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people will be read responsively. Please respond with the words, let us rise with you. Eternal One, we thank you for your Son, Jesus, who said to us, follow me. Jesus led us to serve others, to heal, to give generously, and to speak of your love. Jesus gave up his life, dying to this world so that he could show us the way to eternal life. Jesus, Redeemer of the world, let Let us us rise rise with with you. you. 
We ask for healing for all who suffer from illness of any kind, from loneliness, addiction, or despair. Jesus, healer of the sick, let, let us, us rise, rise with, with you. you. We ask for peace from the streets of this city throughout the world, for peace in the Middle East, Ukraine, Congo, Sudan, and all areas of the world torn by war and violence. Jesus, giver of peace, let, let us, us rise, rise with, with you. We ask you to give us the courage and wisdom to curb our consumption and care for this planet. Jesus, who lived simply upon this earth, let, let us, us rise, rise with you. We pray for all who have died, that they may rise to the life eternal. We pray especially for Betsy Owen and Louise Van Decker. Jesus, who lives eternally, let us, let us rise, rise with, with you. you. We thank you, Heavenly Father, that through your Son, Jesus, you have called us to be witnesses that we may be Christ's hands and feet in this world. And for this, we give you thanks. In the name of the risen Christ, amen. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. Good morning. It's wonderful to see all of you today. You may be seated. I want to welcome everyone who's new or visiting with us this Sunday. If it's your first time with us or your first time with us in a while, I would invite you to fill out one of the connection cards. You can find these in the pew back in front of you. We, we have one or two being held up around the church. Thanks, Susan. Thank you, Susan. <laughs> If you want to fill one of those out, we'd love to know who you are and how we can journey with you in your spiritual lives. You can drop that in the plate when it comes by in a couple minutes or give it to one of the clergy or one of the ushers right after the service. If you're joining us online, welcome to you also. We'd also love to know who you are. You can go to jackscathedral.org slash welcome to tell us a little bit about yourself. If you look at the back of the bulletin around page 11, you'll see a number of upcoming announcements. Um, but we want to highlight a few in particular. First of all, thank you to everyone who continues to bring in bags of groceries for St. Mary's. As a little sample this morning, I tried to count the number of bags of groceries right before I processed up. There were no bags of groceries here three hours ago. There are now about two dozen full bags of groceries. That's food that you all are helping contribute towards this wonderful food pantry, St. Mary's. Another way that you can help those in need, we have the blood mobile outside. You can certainly give blood to, um, towards that. And I think they even give you a little gift if you give blood. <laughs> yes, they definitely give you cookies. I know that. <laughs> that is a gift. <laughs> yes. Speaking of giving blood, this morning we welcomed Don Schindorfer, who is the founder of this amazing ministry called the Free Wheelchair Mission. He is such a giver. He is outside giving blood right now. <laughs> he came to the eight o'clock and now he's out giving blood. So, and so is his um, director of development, Angela Gomez. But I hope that you'll come to Tolliver Hall and meet them. Um, oh, are they coming in? Yay, here he comes. Don, <laughs> come on in. Come on up, come on up. So, those of you who have heard this story, I'm not going to go into detail, but Don is an engineer who got a PhD at MIT, and his story is one of how to recognize God's call, because he realized as an introvert, he wasn't great with people, but he could make wheelchairs. And because of Don's vision, he is now, and this nonprofit he founded, they have given away 1.4 million, 1.4 million wheelchairs. And just at this time, we have a special, through donors and through his nonprofit, we have a special opportunity. For $96, you can give four wheelchairs to four different people. Um, 
if you make a donation to the cathedral, but put in the memo section, free wheelchair mission. Um, for $96, four wheelchairs can get people who are crawling on the ground, rise them up off the ground. Remember, our season of Easter is, is the theme of rising. So please consider that if you can manage that, or maybe with a friend. Um, it's such an amazing gift. So Don will be there signing books and talking more about the details of his incredible work after this service. Thank you so much for being here, Don. Don, I hope they didn't have to yank the, um, the needle out when you were giving blood to make yeah. it back in here. A <laughs> um, couple of other announcements. This afternoon, we have an incredible organist coming to play a recital at four o'clock. This is the organist at Notre Dame in Paris. So pretty good organist. We'll see if he can keep time with our own Tim Teller though. Um, but four o'clock this afternoon, that should be wonderful. Presentation and reception to follow. This coming Saturday, we're gonna host a spring festival here at the cathedral, and that should be a lot of fun. Please check out your bulletin. On Sunday, we have a barbecue lunch for all newcomers, and that's anybody who consider themselves new. And uh, last but not least, you know, one of the signs of a healthy church where the Holy Spirit is moving is that there's a lot of generosity. And not only are we doing this wheelchair project, but we are also sending a bunch of pilgrims to Guatemala to what is called Safe Passage. They're gonna be working with children in a school next to a garbage dump uh, in the city. And um, we're so proud that they're going and I wanna call them forward so I can give them a blessing with you. We're all gonna bless them, okay? And Mark is one of them. So even though Mark's a priest, he deserves a blessing too. <laughs> Mark and everyone else who's going, um, Wendy's going, Marie Burns, Pat Ellis, Denise Hudman, Janet and Heath Klingensmith, I blessed at eight. James, Mare, Cheryl, Ulrich, Melissa Patillo, and Susan Patillo. Would you all come forward? Thank you for taking the risk to go to Guatemala and to do this work. We're so blessed that you're going to go. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. As Teresa of Avila said so beautifully centuries ago, Christ has no hands but ours and no feet but ours. We ask your blessing, Almighty God, upon these pilgrims as they go forward to do your work in the world. We ask you to bless the children of Guatemala. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, may God's blessing rest upon you. May you be signs of Christ's love to this broken world. Amen. 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 Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God.
Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to be our praise and praise. Father, you made the world and love your creation. You gave your Son, Jesus Christ, to be our Savior. His dying and rising have set us free from sin and death. And so we gladly thank you with saints and angels praising you and singing. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit, that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends. And taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them, and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again, he praised you, gave it to them and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him, we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. Bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation, we proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Great is the mystery of faith. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favor on your people, gather us in your loving arms and bring us with all the saints to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, O loving Father forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, 
who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Jesus is known to us in the breaking of the bread. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. These are the gifts of God for you. You are the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. You may be seated.
Our final prayer is found on page nine of your bulletin. Let us pray. Why don't you rise and pray with me? Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The blessing of God Almighty be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.